Say he is a walking history book of the borderland, a man who took it upon himself to preserve the history of a city that was not his at birth, but is now home to his family and his legacy. In a special report tonight, KTSM 9 News reporter Stephania Safer details what the future holds for arguably the best known local expert of our past. Well, I can see it. He scripted El Paso. He put El Paso on the map. He started chronicling our archives back in 1967 at Utah. The first to gather every possible snippet of the borderland's 400-year history. Our stories couldn't be told if it weren't for him. And penning them to life. An author, lecturer, and historian whose byline reads, Leon Metz. This man has done so much, not only for El Paso, but for the entire Southwest. Originally from West Virginia, Metz joined the U.S. Air Force, eventually landing him at Biggs Field in El Paso, the city he now calls home. We have been publishing his works throughout our academic projects and publications since 91. Mostly within the pages of the Southwest Chronicle, the local publication which he used for years to educate any and everybody on the things he was passionate about. Fort Bliss, Billy the Kid, The Border, that publication now run by one of his protégés. Working 15, 17 hour days with this man. He was very meticulous in his details. He was very structured, very punctual. <laughs> Characteristics that have slowly disappeared. A man who dedicated his life to finding history, now losing his memory to Alzheimer's. I was with him at the, at the hospital and he asked me, he goes, so how's the publication going? And for those seven seconds, it was wonderful, it was priceless, and it was gone. A fountain of knowledge grown over the years and taken away over the years. Metz was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 2002. It's, it's a blessing, but it's challenging and like, he knows me most of the time, but you know, now two or three times a week, he doesn't know me. Metz's wife of 48 years, Cheryl. We have three children, and we have six grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. So we, we are so lucky. Continuing the Mets legacy. After our grandson started playing football for <laughs> UTEP, then everyone says, are you related to, and what I was always used to was, are you related to Leon Mets? And I tell you, yeah, yeah, he's my husband. <laughs> now they say, are you related to Ryan Mets? <laughs> but even with Alzheimer's, Mets, his work, and the feeling he left with those he inspired cannot be forgotten. He was giving like uh, 150 talks a year. <laughs> I mean, you know, that is quite an accomplishment. Stories documented in a re-release of the Southwest Chronicle. His articles and works restructured to appeal to the next generation of historians, all in Met's honor. He was just such a wonderful storyteller. You could look and see just how attentive the audience was and of course he has a very distinctive voice one that can still be heard outside the El Paso History Museum this was the most man killing intersection in the American West even though a lot of his books are out of print uh, he is to know that he can, you can still hear him give a talk and be mesmerized by what he says that is something that will live on and I'm, I'm very proud of him. As Stephanie is safe for KTSM 9 News. And Mets published over 17 books, but there was one that was never released. The Southwest Chronicle is going to be featuring a chapter of that unpublished book in its summer edition.